Well, they on to you, Ruby. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on. We're back for another Good Girl Review. This is Season 3, Episode 10, Opportunity. So, we start off, the girls are at the park, and they're waiting for 11 o'clock a.m. to hit, because that's the supposed time of death for Rio. Um... They waiting around to get a call from the hitman because he told them about 11 o'clock, the deed would be done. So they're sitting there on the park bench and they're waiting, watching the kids play. And then all of a sudden, Annie's like, the deed is done. And they're like, what, girl? <laughs> the dog over there. He just took a, a, a sigh of relief. His spirit has left his body. <laughs> the deed is done. And they really like hanging on that. And Beth is, you know, taking it as well. Maybe she's right. Maybe it's over with, you know, so they feel like they got something to celebrate. Um. Then we see Dean and his son. They're driving around in the car. Looks like they running errands, having, you know, father son moment. Um. And Dean pulls up to this house, and then we see that Dean is driving for like a Uber Eats or like a Grubhub type of situation. He has a run in with the customer. The customer won't, um, I think he wanted like extra ketchup or extra hot sauce or something like that, and Dean didn't get it. And he's no, it was ranch. He's like, I can't eat this without no ranch. Take it back. <laughs> so he don't even want it no more. Um, and he ends up giving the food to his son. Annie's at home studying for the test. I don't know who she's in there with. She said uncle, cause Ben came, Ben showed up as well. And she said, say hey to your uncle, you remember your uncle. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I, I really feel like that's what I heard. I think I heard her say that that man was an uncle. So, you know, maybe he's a half brother. Cause I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, he's, um, she, he's there because Annie wants to get a fake ID off of him. She wants to, you know, pass this, this test with flying colors without having to take it, without having to pass it. Um, she just wants the identification that says she got her, her GED. Um, and he's willing to do that, of course. Um, then we see, um... The FBI detective, I don't know what, what she is, um, but we see her, they working at the hotel, she and her partner, and still, you know, trying to figure out where this um, fingernail polish was bought at, where it sold, um, who had it, where they got it from, all of that. They want to know all of that. Um, and they're getting closer and closer to finding out, uh, you know, where, what actual nail salon that is mainly used in or you know what salon buys it the most i should say i don't know but um they asked you know she asked well they had this homeless event you know that so that's you know convenient to blame a robbery on them um why were they there what were they there for how long were they there who all over there that's them all the questions she has <laughs> as far as you know that that lead goes um, so now they got to figure all of that out. Ruby's at home and she getting ready and she tells Stan he gonna have to run out and go get some good china. He gonna have to go get the good dishes because they having company. And he's like, well, is my mama coming? And she's like, no, worse, donor family. So the donor family is on their way in town to have dinner with them. So they got to get ready for that. Um... Because Sarah, and I finally figured out the child name. Her name's Sarah. I'm still going to call her Peanut. Yeah, I'm still going to call her Peanut. But anyway, Peanut, she wants to atone for her sins and um, cleanse her soul. 
and Ruby feel like that's not a bad idea for the whole entire household because everybody got something they need to get under the blood. So <laughs> Ruby is down. Stan, not so much. Um, Beth, she twirling through the house. <laughs> Don't make me over. Just swooning, just twirling through the house, getting ready to pop her champagne. And I don't know where she hid Rio in the house. He inside the house. So what are we celebrating? Um, nothing. Nothing at all. I just felt like getting a little champagne. <laughs> that, that's that's all. I mean, it, it nothing to celebrate, you know. So of course she's looking at him like she's seen a ghost because he's supposed to be dead. He was supposed to be dead at eleven o'clock that morning. And he's standing in her living room. Next thing we see, they he taking her somewhere. Um, they driving, and she trying to figure out where they're going. He ain't telling her nothing. Um, but of course, she's under the impression that she he, she's being driven to her demise. Um, and then they pull up to a car wash, and she feels like again, okay, so I guess he's gonna get me in here while we in this car wash. She nervous. She trying to talk him out of it. Trying to, you know, make small conversation. Um, I guess to to try to steer him in, in another direction besides killing her. And he reaching his glove box. And I thought he was going to pull out a gun. He ain't pull out a gun. He pull out all of this money. And gives it to, you know, the people at the car wash. So I guess, you know, that was to pay for all of that. And a little extra. Um... And I want to say his car wash might be, that car wash might be like a front for him because he gave them a lot of money. And I'm assuming it was just, it was a lot of money for them to wash. Um, but he want to know where all this money is going. Her little cut, he want to know, well, okay, where your little cut, where it's going? Where is it all going? Where is it going, Beth? Elizabeth? And she, you know, trying to come up with some story. He still ain't buying it. Um, but <laughs> she still, you know, I guess, I don't know. It's it, like you can never tell with Rio whether or not he is really on to her or whether he's just suspicious. Like he just don't trust her. I don't think, I don't know because I'm beginning to think he doesn't know anything about um, Beth's plans, you know, and what she's, what she has really been doing with the money. Um, but the way he asks her, he is kind of like, you know how you be asking somebody something, but you already know the answer to, but you just wanted to see if they're going to lie to you. <laughs> and I feel like that's what Rio does to Elizabeth. Um, then we see, hold on. Oh, I forgot that because she wouldn't tell him where, I mean, where that money is going and what she's doing with it. He's just like, all right, well then you out. I'm cutting you out. I don't need you. And he just cuts her out altogether. So now she out again, <laughs> put on punishment again. He done took her little allowance again. Beth and the girls, they're at this post office and they're going to go see the um, hit man. Because of course, um, we don't pay you to do a job and you ain't even do it. And so the little weird girl behind the um behind the counter, <laughs> she act like she don't know what they're talking about at first. And he there, but she gonna go back there. Oh, he's busy right now. They like so he's here. No, tell him to come outside. It's Elizabeth Bowling. Oh, I have something for you. There you go. <laughs> and it's this long, lengthy booklet of um notes and bills pretty much he been billing her and oh, for every little thing and they like nah they, you know of course they get back in the car and they looking um two hundred dollars for this and two hundred eleven thousand dollars is what it came up to and off all of these incidentals um and so of course when they're while they're sitting outside you know discussing that they not paying that bill um, they see him. And so Beth is like, oh, that's him over there. They follow him. They see him first. Before they start following him, they see that he goes to his trunk. And he pick, he pulls out this, this cello case. And he recognizes it to be a cello case. And at first they're like, but how much you want to bet ain't no cello inside the case. So they follow him around. 
and he stops at this little store. They think he going they think it's a mob hit and he gonna kill this old man, but he doesn't. He just buys a lollipop from him and keep pulling money out of it. And he stops somewhere else and picks up once something else. And then he ends up at this elementary school. And the um when he when he gets there, his daughter, you know, she runs up to him and so then they see, okay. It really is a cello in there and you know he did all that running around for his daughter before he got to her to drop off her um cello and he leaves from over there and he automatically pull out his gun and run up on um the girls in the car and he's basically um why y'all following me what's what's this about what you want and you know of course they trying to play coy you know but they like um i'm just here to talk about the job you know that we hired you for it didn't get done so what's that about and he's like well you listen per <laughs> section 5a on page 22 it says there that you know i can you know call all of this off you know due to breach of contract and they like how do we breach the contract and he's like um i don't do the lovers quarrels i don't do I don't have that to do. <laughs> that and shout out to James Caldwell. He says that a lot. I don't have that to do. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not finna be shooting up people because you mad at him. Like, which one of y'all, which one of y'all has sex with the with the target? And they all looking around, and he's like, listen, it was one and done. Like, we ain't we ain't pressed over here like that. It's nothing like that. And he still ain't buying it. He's still like, nah, I don't do, I don't do the jilted, the jilted lover type of situation. It's too messy. It's gonna bring too much mess my way. So I don't, I don't, I don't deal in that. Um, and of course, she still, you know, she like, well, we're not paying this. Just so you know, we're not paying this bill. And he's like, listen, you might want to pay your debt because let me, let me show you what happens when you don't pay your debt. Yeah, you see that? That's what happens when you don't pay your debt. So, it's up to you. It's up to you whether you want to end up like them or, you know. So, let me know. Let me know what y'all going to do. And <laughs> he just turn around and walk off. Um, Annie. She's with the guy, brother. I don't know. With the dude that's supposed to give her that ID. And she's trying to small talk him. You know, of course, he's ready for his coin. And she's just like, I was thinking that maybe I was going to get the family friends discount. You know, like I was thinking, you know, you was going to hook me up because I can't really pay you. And he's like, oh, see, now listen, if the street, if, it, if word gets out that I'm helping you out, that I'm just letting you, you know, slide without paying me. The streets gonna be talking and everybody know ain't nobody gonna be able to take me serious. I'm gonna have to do the same thing for everybody else. I can't do it, Annie. I'm sorry. You just gonna have to take the test and pass it like everybody else. Sorry, sis. <laughs> um Ruby and her family, they having dinner with the don with the donor family, and the donor family is being so and right off the back, I was like, I don't trust them. With all of it, with with, the, with with wanting to pray so much, like they wanted to say about four prayers over the food, they they had they got this whole spread out and they ready to dig in. Stan, Ruby, the kids ready to dig in, and they sitting there like, well, we normally pray. Okay, let's pray. Father God, thank you for Ruby and Stan. They've been such a blessing. Thank you for Sarah. She's a beautiful girl. Thank you for our daughter for being a vessel. <laughs> like they really went in. And in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Dig in. And then he looked, looking at Stan. Stanley. Don't don't you want to say something? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, Thank you for coming here to eat, yada, 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 what he said, all of that. <laughs> and, then, and then Stan ends the prayer. Um, but while they're there, they find out that the family took a bus to go to come out there. 
You know, because they asked how their trip was, and they like, oh, the bus ride was nice. The bus ride, that must have been a long, oh, we didn't, we only went for so far, and then we got off and did ride share the rest of the way. So the people are hurting from, for cash, a car, all of that. They they in a rough patch, but they're trying to make it seem like this too shall pass. You know, we get by. Um, and Sarah's like, why don't we just buy them a ticket? And, you know, Stan says, that's a good idea. He's like, no. No, no, we don't keep your money. We don't take handouts. We're just blessed to be here with you guys today. We just so we just so thankful. Um, and of course, Ruby and um, Stan they feel bad about that. You know, it's like dang, they they good people and we terrible people. <sighs> Stan's like such is like. All right, sweet potato pie. Who wants a piece? <laughs> Um, Dean and Beth, they at home and Dean comes in there with all of this hot sauce all over him. He didn't had a, a snafu, you know, with the delivery. Um, and he, he burnt out. He tired of that. He's like, listen, I can't do this no more. I cannot do the Uber Eats anymore. And we're going to have to figure out something else for me to do. Cause I can't do this no more. Um, and then Dean, I mean, and then Beth just has this bright idea. And next thing we see, she's. At a pool hall meeting Rio, um, you know, trying to sell him on hot tub ideas. She's like, listen, I got a fool that'll sell some hot tubs and we can wash the money. You know, like they going to be looking for laundry mats, car washes. You know, they're going to be looking for those type of establishments, you know, as fronts. Ain't nobody going to be looking at no hot tub place. And he's like, they're called spas. I'll have my people call your people. You, you you have a good night, Elizabeth. <laughs> so he going to take her up on that. Um, and Dean going to be doing what he love, you know. He going to have to have his, he going to get his own spot, pretty much. He ain't going to have to work for that lady no more. Well, he quit anyway. Um, back, Beth and, Beth and the hitman, she's back at his office and they talking. And um, he, he pretty much runs down Rio's schedule for her. Um, it, vaguely, because he felt he said, if I give you too many details, I'm gonna have to bill you for it. And um, he asked her, you know, when he when they were leaving, when they were parting ways, he asked her, you know, how did you even get involved with him? How did a girl like you get with a dude like him? And um, she's just like, I was bored, and that was that. Ruby's at home. This is the next morning. She done fixed breakfast. This this big old spread for the donor family. And donor mom come out there. And she just ain't got no shame. Ask them people for a car. And Ruby like, now we ain't doing that good. I mean, we getting by, but listen, it's a struggle over here. And she's like, is it? Your daughter got a whole kidney. She's living and well. I don't think y'all heard for money. <laughs> Come up off the car. Thank you very much. Like, now you feel like I'm indebted to you because your daughter donated her heart? Nah. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, nah, donor mom. No, and see, I knew something like that was coming. It was either going to be that or they was just going to straight up get robbed. But that's a, that's a robbery right there. Just done extorted a car out of them people. <sighs> anyway, um, Anna, Anna, <laughs> Annie, she's at home and Ben gets gets home. And he all upset because he sees the GED books in the trash. Like, you quit? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she's like, listen, I'm grown. I ain't got to do this. I'm grown. And he's like, okay. Well, I I I got I got one for you too. And he go outside with his books and finna throw him down the um garbage chute and he gonna be done with his education too, since that's what we doing. Since it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me too. And of course that, that changes her mind. She can't she can't take it, you know. It's like Lord, I ain't trying to steer you down that direction. So I go in here and study for the little test. Um so she go in there and she study hard. We see a whole little montage of Annie and Ben um, you know running over the information and Annie getting prepped for her test um, and then she takes the test and you know she finishes before everybody and she looks confident um, then we see Beth um, she meets with the hitman I guess at his little hideout his little hiding sniper space whatever 
Um, you know, he's taking his guns out, getting everything ready. He's got his scope ready, you know, looking across the street. Um, and he tells Beth, go ahead and look through there. Look, 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 look through that lens and tell me what you see. And she look, and at first she don't see nothing. I don't really see nothing. What, what I'm supposed, what am I supposed to be looking for? And he's like, look again. And so she look again. And then she sees Rio's car pulling up. What, what what you what you got me doing? What you got me doing, Hitman? And he's like, on your on your mark. Let me know. You just let me know when to shoot. And I got you. Just let me know when to shoot. It's on you. And she's like, oh me? You the Hitman? No. Why it's got to be up to me? Well, cause I gotta know that we ain't gonna have no regrets. So yeah, just tell me when to go. I'm waiting. <laughs> and she's standing there. <sighs> okay, go. And then he shoots it. And it's a dad going paint a paintball gun. Some dude get out the car. It's a decoy. He was, you know, playing with her, toying with her. It's like, now you're ready, grasshopper. Now you're ready. <laughs> and I don't know. I'm assuming that made Beth feel a little bit better. But now he trusts her and he's like, he's gonna put her back on the books. Um, he's like, you and, you and me, you and me, we a lot alike. Cause you know, I got into killing folks cause I was bored. So yeah, we one in the same. <laughs> um, oh, back at Annie's house, she failed the test. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Ben called the therapist over there or if Annie called her therapist over there, but the therapist shows up and, um, he takes her to the bar, down to the bar, and they're having beers. They're drinking and having a good conversation. And just the chemistry is just there. Like, you can just, it's permeating off of them. They're having a great time together. And then they get all cozied up, you know, like this. You know, hands on hands on hands and stuff. And he's just like, I proposed to Lila yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> I proposed to her. We get married. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of them. I got myself. I'm going to go ahead and pay for my drinks. That's cool. Congratulations. And he's just like, well, guess that's, guess that's that. Now, you, same time next week. I'll see you next time. You know, he just gets up and leaves. But, of course, he's still fighting the fact that he really does like Annie. Um, but he has to move forward with his relationship because of the list. You know, she, she, she hit it. She hitting her marks on the list. So he got to stick with Lila. Um, then we see the FBI. No way. Dean, Beth gets home and Dean is in there playing around with Legos and, you know, making his own little diagram of how he's going to want his um his establishment to look like he's going to call it Bolin's Bubbles. So, they got that in the works and you know, he thanks her for that. Thank you for giving me another chance, you know, thank you for getting me out there working again. Tell your man as I said, thank you. Good looking out. <laughs> um FBI lady, man, whatever. They still working together. He's on the computer and they brainstorming and he sees that um, Ruby bought a car. So, of course, it's like, you buying cars? You know, like now, they really following the paper trail. So, I don't know what that's going to be like, but they saw that she bought the car. And then he tries to toss the fingernail polish to, um, to the girl, you know, to show where it came from. And it hits the floor. That's where it goes out at. I mean, goes off. But they on to Ruby. So... We all know Ruby is already feeling like she ain't trying to do this no more. She's she she might be to the point where she will tell or you know save herself and her family and Beth and Annie would be you know left to hang out to dry. I don't know. I hope not cuz she's been met with this type of pressure before when Stan was a police officer and it was kind of um, you know, coming around to them full circle. But now I don't know. I don't know. FBI come knocking at her door again. She might she might fold this time. Um anyway, that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed 
the review. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you guys later. Peace and light.